pick the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. kids welcome back it's a new week it's a new project uh the new project is still in it's my ever increasing hair um it is a new project but it is it's still in the mail i do have uh, uh confidence it will arrive this week so we could still do a meet the parts type of thing uh but there's some work i can do um in preparation for its arrival because i know what i want to do as far as lighting it so uh, the first thing I want to do is take a lighting circuit that I've got from Ralph and just basically tear it all apart. Okay, this is the subject at hand. Uh, this is a lighting circuit from Ralph. It is for his, or it is his circuit for the Invader's UFO. Now, Invader's UFO does everything, the light kit does everything that I want it to do. However, this is the wrong color. This is red. This is actually a three-speed deal, and if I rub a, if I flash a uh, uh, a magnet next to it, it goes through the three speeds. So, um, but it's red, and I want it to be clear. I thought it was clear. The, uh, the sample online on on Ralph's site, he used an example where it was clear, but that's one that uh, it was it was altered after he got it. So I'm going to alter mine the same exact way because I want to make these clear. Um, so what basically I have to do is chop all these bulbs off and put longer extended white bulbs on instead. So that's what I'm doing today and that'll help get me uh, ready for when the kit arrives. Let me see, here's a, here's a um, magnet so that I can show you the different speeds. This is why I don't particularly care for magnets sw uh, read switches. There you go. And the reason that you see the blank is because I've already chopped out three. It doesn't work. I tried doing a sample with one bulb and it, it's the old red white uh, LED problem. So if I chop out a whole circuit, then I replace it. You can see the white one going off. Then it'll work because the uh, Ralph explained it to me, but honestly, it sounded like uh, Greek after a while, but it's about how the red sucks up all the voltage in the room and doesn't allow enough of it to, to go down line for the white ones. So it works when I get rid of all of them, but just by getting rid of one of them, it wasn't working. And there you go. This is example one. I've got one of the four different lighting circuits. It's one, one, two, three, four. I've got one of the four set out, and I'm just going to take from this pile and extend this out. Neat. I always like to end the day on a positive note, and it's while it's true I finished this hours ago, um, the end of the day has come because of other things, and here we go. It is up. It is working. This is the deal where it has this magnet switch that changes the speed. I'm not a big fan of those, so I may work this into something else, but here you go. And then there's one more. But that is replacing all of the uh, red lights with much longer, wider spread, uh, warm white lights. And then I can run a constant light. The, the circuit allows for a uh, standard, and I think you can put four bulbs on this, just on LEDs, which I will also need. Uh, I'm also going to need a pulsing LED in the bottom that I think I'm going to use Elliot's uh, circuit for. I, I've been looking for a, way, a place to use Elliot's uh, monster circuit, and I think that's where it's going to go. But yeah. The only thing I can think of that's going to be a problem with this is when I turn the power off, it does not retain that speed. It goes, it starts out slow again. So um, I'm going to have to hide, change this to another type of switch and hide it somewhere on the build. I, or I, I don't know. I, just, I don't like the idea of having to run that off a separate switch. 
We'll have to see how that progresses. But it is possible. It is possible to swap out all of those red LEDs with white, warm white LEDs. The lighting continues. It's uh, Wednesday, and while we're still waiting for the model to show up, I am still amassing all of the lighting that I'm going to be needing for it. And maybe this will give you a hint. It's going to look like this when we're done with one wheel going one way and one wheel going the other. Of course, by the time you see the video, you won't need any hints because I will have shown you the kit. But it's I pretend I have a little bit of mystery right now. Well, this is tremendous. It's a day, actually a day early. This is Wednesday. And uh, the new kit has arrived. The new phone book's here. The new phone book's here. Uh, the new kit has arrived. And we are going to open it and inspect the parts together. Uh, as I said, the uh, last tracking update had this coming in tomorrow. So we'll see. Well, we will see and then we will know. Oh, this is going to be huge. Oh, man. Oh, man. Beauty gonna be huge when it's done these are some beautifully uh, beautifully cast parts now is that cast or is that printed that might even be printed that's beautiful and look at this Oops. pull out the okay packing packing parts and packing oh man that's gorgeous that's a beauty. This is going to be a fun kit. Yes, it's going to make it take a little bit of cleanup because I got to, I believe I have to cut it off at that level, but this is going to be beautiful. Carefully stack all this over here. Yeah. I cannot wait. And that's the rest of the lamps. And packing material and packing material and if this oh this is the bottom of it that's glorious that is actually that goes like I believe this goes like here that is going to be glorious okay this is getting too too big to sit down here um, Okay, let's see what this is. I believe I know. These are the landing gear parts that are all etched or cut out of acrylic. And this came packed wonderfully. Let me get the box out of the way so that you can see. Ah, yes, this is the bottom. Hemisphere. Oh yeah. Okay, well here is, I know I've been teasing, but this is it. It is Phone Home One. It is ET's spaceship from movie of the same name. And it's gonna have lights in it like you won't believe. And this is what I think it what, what I think it is, what I was told to be on the lookout for. Oh yeah. Okay now. Okay, okay, okay. Take it easy. Slow down. It's got tiny little, tiny little printed ETs to go with it. Tiny little printed ETs. And I've got four of them here. I'll take my glasses off so I can see. Now one of them's got a, one of them came out with a broken arm. That's okay. I can fix it. Yeah, I could just, some of them lost some fingers. That's okay, too. I can glue those back on. And these are, a lot of these parts are cut 
uh, laser cut acrylic. So they are going to be strong as all get out here. Oh yeah. And this which looks like a steering wheel or captain's wheel is actually part of the top. Let me see if I can find that part right here. Okay, that is the top that sits on it like that. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a treat. And these all get all of these lamps here. They're all going to get LEDs. All these lamps are going to get LEDs so that they can be lit. So I just need to sit down and pull out all the parts and then we'll do a formal uh, meet the parts. Well, good morning and welcome back. It is Thursday already. Man, this week is zipping by. And I'm taking a minute out from uh, plotting. That's why you don't hear the plotter in the background. To catch you up. Now, I have gone through. I have inventoried all the parts. And I was missing quite a few. So, contacted Christopher, who is the creator of this kit. Um, found it through the Model Master... Modeler Master Kirk Coons website, but it's goldenarmor.com. If you go to goldenarmor.com, um, you will see, you will find this kit. It does take a bit of hunting because he just has a ton of really neat stuff on his site. But uh, he does a lot of helmet work, a lot of weapon work, but uh, also produces this kit. He's got a lot of good fifth element stuff, which I may be hitting him up for at a later date. Um, but I was, like I said, I was going through the parts and uh, inventorying them against his pictures and just, you know, counting pieces out. And uh, I was coming up short. So I quickly emailed him and we went back and forth a few times about what was missing, what wasn't, uh, what had been changed since uh, um, he had posted his pictures and I kind of gently chided him about don't post pictures of stuff you don't have anymore that's just not good business uh but he's got he, he's actually been improving this this is version three of his kit and uh some of his older pictures of earlier versions were uh was what was confusing the issue because he had changed his method for uh for uh, building certain parts and still had older pictures on his site so that being said, uh, gone through and picked out some parts that I still need that I didn't get. He's making me up a, a supplemental box of those parts, sending them along. So I think we're going to be all good and ready to go with that. So uh, today I've been spending the morning in between running back and forth and nursing the plotter, um, sanding the parts. I'm getting ready to start sanding some of these parts. And um, this has taken me back, kids. This has taken me back to the old days of resin kits where you got some good resin parts, very little instruction, and a plain brown box that it comes in and told to go at it. So, and that's what I'm doing. And parts that need cleaning are in abundance. Uh, started with this cap part. Went in and cleaned out the bottom of that. That was... I won't say it was full to the rim, but it was not nearly as clean as that. So clean that out so that when I put a light in here, it will shine out and spill over the top of the dome like it's supposed to. So, and I tell you, uh, I found this bit. I found this bit uh, at a woodworking shop, and it fits in my drill, uh, my cordless drill, and I use it all the time now. It is beautiful. It looks like this. Let me uh, put some light on it. See if I can, there you go. It is, uh, it's, I, I, it's like a rasp on steroids. And you put that into your drill bit and you just go to town with it. But it's got this cone shape here and a rounded shape on the back. And the uh, rounded shape is what I used to kind of fill this out, this area out, doing a little bit of that, checking it all the time to make sure I wasn't going too thin you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't going to break through one of the walls or anything. But the cone shape is a natural for drilling out this inside of this cone. But it's even better suited for these. And these are, there are nine of them. They are the, uh, 
I would call them work lights. They are the lights that come out on arms. Uh, they, they suck back in at the end of the movie, but they come out and they form a, a ring of lights around the ship that shine down so that the little ETs can see the plants that they are getting. And by using one of those, uh, I gotta hook the clip up here. By using that bit, I was able to clean them out as well because uh, you obviously you want to light them, and you want to put the you want to put the light in there. So, in order to make that work, I needed to hollow these hollow this cone out a little bit more. And I gotta tell you, it's just as easy as putting this into bit putting that into drill. And just plunging it into there and just, you know, reaming it out from the inside. It doesn't take too much time at all. You just have to be very careful that you don't bust through an outer wall or anything. So, you know, it's good to do that outside where you can kind of hold it up and see if you're, like here, I'm starting to see, uh, whoop, helps if it's under the, uh, there was one spot right there where I noticed I was starting to see a little bit of daylight. And so that means that was too thin and I should stop sanding at that point. And I might even want to go back in with a little bit of epoxy sculpt on the inside and fill that back in. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's old, it's old time, old school resin cast. No 3D printed nonsense here. There are quite a few laser cut acrylic pieces, which is good because those for the landing gear particularly, you need the extra strength. I'm trying to uh, hollow this out as much as possible because I am going to be adding a substantial amount of weight to it with all the lighting and I want to make sure that uh, it is not as heavy as um, uh, well I'm trying to take, keep the weight up off of the landing gear so I'm trying I'm going to be thinning out some stuff so that I don't have a lot of excess weight in this and so the other piece that I've been working on today before the rains came and I can't work outside anymore today uh, is this top dome now this top dome looks a lot better now when you look at it in profile than when I uh, got it out of the box yesterday. It looked a little too pointy to me so I wanted to shave down the top and uh, round it off a little bit more. The entire overall shape of the ship is more of an egg and less of a ball. Uh, I know that the uh, common uh, conventional wisdom is that this is a ball but it really isn't. It's more of an egg shape. Uh, it's taller than it is wide. That, that's the, probably the best way I can phrase it. So, um, and when you sit to this point on top of it, it does flatten it out. I mean, it does make it look more round. But just sitting by itself, it uh, had a little bit too much of a point up here, and I still need to drill a hole here to run the last bit of wiring for the light that's going to go up in here. So. Uh, I'm going to be sanding on this area anyway. So I just took a sander and just kind of worked my way down and just took some of that point off of it. But as I've said, the rains have come and I am no longer able to sand all of this resin outdoors. So that is where we're going to uh, leave it until the weather turns. Now, um, there are smaller pieces, obviously, that I could be cleaning up and uh, sanding in here, but I can't do the large scale... Um, big industrial strength sanding until uh, it stops raining outside. So uh, back to the orders. Good morning kids, it's Friday. It's the last work day of the week. And uh, I've mocked this up to show you what I've got in mind for the lighting. Uh, of course, lots and lots of work before we get anywhere near installing any of this. Uh, but this will give you an idea. I've got two counter rotating uh, circuits in there. One, the top one going uh, clockwise and the bottom one going counterclockwise. And now the, the obvious thing is, besides adding color to everything, is that these need to be more yellow. So what I'm thinking is putting a clear backer between these teeth and uh, painting that like a clear yellow, to me a clear yellow uh, or a little bit maybe a yellow orange. I'll check the colors on that but that's the idea and I need to lower this top circuit so that it's sitting more in the center right now it's resting up towards the ceiling and that's a little too high 
but those are sit that bottom one sitting just right and I think that speeds even good I was worried about uh, having to adjust the speed on that and I think both of those are pretty doing pretty well uh, so now that the uh, Sun is shining today once I get this order out which has taken me all week uh, thanks Steve it is the hugest order I have ever put out um, it has taken me all week to get it done uh, once I get that out today, I can really come back and uh, start concentrating on this. And now that the sun is shining, like I said, I can get in some more sanding today. Uh, most importantly, taking all of those uh, lights here, these uh, work lights, and hollowing those out so that uh, they can be ready for wiring and construction once I get the rest of the pieces back from... The maker of this fine kit who emailed me yesterday to say that he had worked up my box of uh, missing pieces and he was sending that out so hopefully I'll get that within the next few days believe me I've got more than enough stuff to keep me occupied until then I'm cleaning up the nicks and uh, scratches on the dome because this is going to end up being chromed well not chromed but as close to that as possible whether I'm going to use uh, Molotov or or, or Molotov or uh, Alclads, I'm not quite sure, but it's going to have to be baby bottom smooth before I do that because it gets a black primer or a, black, a gloss black undercoat and then you put the silver over top of it. It's got some very, I'm not going to say unprofessionally, that's, that's cruel, that's not true. Uh, it's got some hand done and that's about as much as I can say hand scribed lines in here that were molded in those were this was not made this was not 3d printed this was made in a mold by a person who had hands and therefore it's going to be imperfect but uh these lines i'm gonna i'm gonna hit this with a primer filler and then see what kind of work i need to do on rescribing any of those lines to even them up a little bit but they are rough and a chrome coat is going to show every bit of that off so I want to make sure this is darn clean and I'm going to check the film again and uh, see which of these see if uh, these need to be opened up for lighting there are whole there are window holes right there that we could open up for lighting uh, but that's my that's my uh, marching orders for the day and I think this is a good place to end for this week it's preliminary it's the first week it's only the third real day I've had to work with this um, but I've got primer coat on the dome a lot of work to do on that yet because I haven't drilled any of the holes out uh, primer on I'm just really I'm in the exploratory process of these parts to see uh, how much work they're going to take I've got some primer on the top here and the antenna it's all it's all in a state of flux I've got bulbs incoming from osmium for the uh, for some of the lighting um, some of the spot lighting I've got the effects lighting kind of nailed down the way I think I like them uh, haven't gotten these drilled out yet today but it is beautiful outside and I'm going to take advantage and mow the grass so uh, mow the backyard at least so I want to hurry up and rush through getting this video ready to upload so that I can be uh, editing it and putting it together a little bit later but uh, everything is coming together like I said I'm still kind of experimenting seeing where everything is going to lay down how everything is going to lay down um, but a good first week we're off, to a, we're off to a good start and that my friends is where we're going to end it for this week yes you can chart my hair growth over the last few weeks until I can find a barbershop that is open barbershop what am I in the 50s a hairstylist that is open um, first week on the the phone home the phone home I have been uh, like I said I've been following the progress of this gentleman's builds and his refinement of his kit for the last oh I don't know two three years so it's good to see that I finally found a place where I could jump in uh, E.T. and I have a have a love-hate relationship um, like I'm sure many of you out there I spent the early this will be the early to mid 80s uh, in the movie theaters when E.T. E came out I was actually working at a theater 
when E.T. came out, and it was our first bona fide blockbuster. Uh, we had that film. Uh, we ran that for four months. And this is back in the 80s uh, when you could get away with that. We were a small three-screen theater, but we ran E.T. for 16 weeks. It ran for four months. And it sold out. I mean, we wouldn't keep it if it didn't keep selling out. And every time we would advertise it as last week, final week, it would start selling out again and we would hold it over. It wasn't, uh, it got to be cynical after a while, but it was just something about it. You couldn't, there wasn't home video back then. Uh, E.T. was never going to show up on television. Now, of course, it shows up all the time, but it was never going to show up on television. It was a cultural phenomenon at a time when those things weren't, they, they, there were people out there trying to, to manufacture uh, phenomenons, and those never work out. But this was an actual, you know, I think it was a cultural phenomenon. Was, well, like I said, one of the f first, wasn't the first blockbuster movie, but it was one of the first ones that our theater experienced. We ran that sucker four times a day, I want to say five times a day, uh, on the weekends, on well, matinee days, but four times a day for 16 weeks, and it sold out. I remember, and here's the thing. This is why this ship gives me the, the, the screaming willies. Um, the last, it shows up in the last five minutes of the movie. It's there, it's there at the very beginning too, but at the last five minutes of the movie with, you know, the heartfelt uh, goodbyes and the I'll be right here's and all that kind of stuff going on. Uh, but then the music swells, the, the credits start rolling, and the people leave the theater. Well, it's also our cue as the usher slash whatever's to get in there and start cleaning out the theater. So for four months, uh, every time that music came on, I had associated it with trying to, trying to sweep out the theater and get ready for the next sold out crowd that was coming in. And yes, we, we swept between each show. I don't know how much they do that these days, but we swept between each show and mopped every night. And... Uh, so for the longest time, for the longest time, even though it's a beautiful John Williams score, I could not listen to that music without getting the PTSD. I just pick up and start cleaning things, e even watching it at home on USA when they would run it. As soon as the, as soon as the uh, credits would come up and I'd hear that music, I would get up and start cleaning the house because that's just where my mind got wired after four after four months so you can see with a little bit of trepidation that i actually stepped my toe back into the world of et but i am really looking forward to this now this shares one important thing with spielberg's other sci-fi movie yes he executive produced a ton of sci-fi but this is the cultural stepbrother to the mothership from close encounters it shares a lot of the thing, and the, and the biggest thing that it shares with the mothership from Close Encounters is it ain't painted all that well. It's not about the paint job. It's about the lighting. It's about the colored lighting. You think about that mothership from Close Encounters, and I've seen it. It's it's at, it's at the uh, Udvar Hazi uh, uh, Air and Space Museum uh, out at Dulles. You can see it. It's in a case. It's all one color, and it's basically gunmetal gray. Nothing special about it. It's all the colored lighting is what you remember. And that's the same thing with the uh, with the phone home. I don't think it ever actually had an actual name. Um, it has very few colors on it. You have that big uh, chrome dome on it. And then you have a lot of rusts and moss colors on the bottom. But it's, it's the lighting that you remember. So the, that's the best thing that I'm going to try to be duplicating is the lighting effects in this. The paint job is no is no great shakes. So, until next week when we'll get into the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty of this, y'all be good. Be good to each other. Stay safe out there. Don't let the you know the the, the lack of news fool you. That the COVID nineteen is still out there. It will still find you. Still wear your masks, please. I want you around. Um, we'll see you next week. Be good. Be good. I taught him that too.